All right, so this is part five of the build series, I believe. Uh, part six in total. Uh, we're gonna be moving on to this piece, which is the base of the nozzle with the recoil, uh, not recoil spring, uh, nozzle spring. So you're gonna need this bag right here. You're gonna have these little springs right here. You're gonna need, for this step, you're just gonna need this spring. Um, so it comes with these two pieces right here. You can see the difference with the raised notches. Um, it tells you in here that they give you a difference in power. Right here. The raised one gives you one joule and the shorter one gives you 1.5 joules. Um, we're going to be putting, first, we're going to start off with the high power one. Um, on my M4, it shoots around 330 FPS with 0.25 gram BBs. So we'll see how much it shoots with a new type bore, longer inner barrel. So we're going to put the high power one first, if we have to, to get it field legal, which is 400 FPS. We'll put in the low power and hopefully with point twos that bring it'll bring it down enough to be field legal. Uh, we'll see. You also have these uh, three pins, uh, more roll pins. Uh, let's see. For the nozzle, we need the roll pin that is one millimeter by 5.5. So that will be the shortest one. So let me get this here. Boom. Open up this baggie as well. Get everything sort of set up and boom. We're also going to need the 1.5 by 11 millimeter, which will be the longest. Would be actually not the longest, but the middle, the middle one. I have calipers, but I don't want to go out and get it. So, first step, um, you want to put the O-ring on this base right here. Um, I don't know why. Oh, it, well, it creates, helps seals up to the back of the nozzle assembly right here. Because it's going to sit like this, so it helps give a seal. Um, the smallest O-ring is supposed to to go over, if I can get it. It doesn't go in this first cutout here, that's where the uh, e uh, the C or E clip or whatever you wanna call it goes when you put it into the bolt carrier. I have big fingers and no fingernails, so this is kinda of hard for me to ever go. And it just messed up again. But yeah, it goes into this bottom groove down here. Um, I made the mistake the first couple of times I built this, putting it here, and then I'm like, oh, well, the E clip doesn't have enough room, and it would break the O ring. And uh, so, yeah, but this gives a seal for the back of the. Where is it? Bolt assembly or bolt carrier. Because this will stick up through here, through that hole. So this just gives it a nice seal around it. Let me just make sure. Yeah. That just helps give a seal right there. It doesn't go in that way. I was just making sure it fit properly. So, next step. Um, you can put this o-ring into this groove right here on the base of the nozzle this is what's going to give you the seal inside of the bolt carrier here so it would be nice if they polished this 
Um, it is smooth compared to the outside. It's, the outside's a little parkerized. The inside is a little bit smoother. I wish it was just a little bit more polished on the inside for the uh, O-ring, but it's smooth enough. Now, the first few times I did this, let's see, put this spring back in here. We don't need it quite yet. This spring is for the uh, nozzle. The nozzle, I think you call it a plunger. So put that, we'll put these, put this one in here since we're not gonna be using it quite yet. Or well, we're not gonna be using this one. This is the one joule. We're gonna be using the 1.5 joule, which is this one. I'm gonna put that in there too as well, just for now, because we're not using it yet. So, I used to just put this on first, but when you put this on first, and you have it with the roll pin in, and then you have to put it in here, you then somehow magically have to line it up with here. So... I'm going to see if I can put the spring in through here first and then the pliers pull the other end of the spring out and then put the pin through the piece of metal. So if we can line this up. And I think that's going to be a little bit too hard to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do is we're going to put the smallest pin, roll pin. We're going to put that one in first through the, uh, well, we're going to start it in the hole for this piece right here just like I do with all my other I'm just gonna start it since these roll pins are really hard to get in especially when you have a spring to hold in there and everything so we're just gonna start this first Be careful not to uh, crush the O-ring or anything. Get it just started. And I push it too far through. <laughs> oh, wow. This is probably going to be a pain to get out since it's... Oh, man. Since it's a millimeter. I don't have a punch that's big enough. And I really don't have enough to grip and pull it out. I mean, maybe. No, it's... I really don't have enough to grip it with. Actually, I just got enough. All right. So I got it, if you can see, a little bit. There's a small gap. Doesn't The gap doesn't have to be huge. You just have to get the uh, loop on the spring in. So get the loop on the spring in. So once you get the loop with the spring in, or the spring with the, the loop in it, then you can get it all the way through. Just make sure you don't, uh, like I said, pinch the O-ring pinch the o-ring it's gonna damage it you can put the o-ring on sort of last what I'm doing right now you can put it over the spring and everything um, that's probably a little bit smarter oh man it's really hard to get in there 
see if I can get it in with some channel locks. Channel locks are just kind of like regular pliers, but you can adjust it to clamp over bigger size items. So it also, it also, when you have it in the right setting, when you go to close, you have a more of a up and down force more than a, a diagonal force. Like if you have it all the way up there, it's more of a diagonal. So if you're trying to push pins through or something that you got to clamp straight down, doesn't happen sort of at an angle as much. This pin does not want to go through. And it has to. Because if the, the pin sticks out a little bit, it's not going to create a good seal inside the housing of the nozzle. Or the back of the nozzle. Oh man. Ooh. I kind of messed up the spring a little bit. <laughs> this pin is really hard to get in. I might have to file it. Yeah, I might have to file this pin. Let me get this o ring off. Probably gonna have to file this down a little bit. Um, I could cheat and not build the bolt, but since I already have a bolt, two bolts, one for my old M4 and one in my new M4, um, so I could cheat <laughs> and not build the bolt. But I just want to show you guys. So let's file this down a little bit. It's such a small piece, it's so hard to grip. Especially with this spring in. It's just really hard to grip. Maybe I can grip it with these pliers a little bit. Oh man, that sucks. This is the first time that's happened to me where the pin hasn't gone all the way through. Luckily, it's such a small pin. It should be fairly easy to file down. Maybe I can push it in now a little bit more. see how much of a seal it makes it's not all the way flush but I think it might be flush enough to get out of the way put this back on get the back of the nozzle now let's see yeah that should be fun. Maybe a little bit more filing. We should be good. It's like sticking out barely a millimeter. <laughs> Just barely. So bear with me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to give you as much detail and really go step by step. Yeah, what happened was when I was, uh, When I was uh, pulling the pin out with the pliers, I think I crushed it a little too much on the end, and so it wasn't perfectly round. So, <clears throat> and 
I just dropped it. Oh, there it is. All right. Let's see how it is now. Nope, and I dropped it again. Ah, oh, these small pieces. Like I said, I'm not too worried because if this bolt doesn't perform properly, I do have others. All right, so this one fits, it fits better now. Let's put the O-ring on. Boom, good seal. Now the trick is, is to get this lined up with that hole, but it's gonna be too short. So, what I do is I get a thin piece of string, like a sewing string. If I can find some in here, which I can, I'll be right back. So the trick is, is you get some sewing line, sewing string, anything that's pretty thin. Uh, I usually double up the sewing string just because it tends to be kind of weak. And what you do once I double this up a little bit. You don't have to use paint. Uh, but something high visible actually is a little bit better instead of just using black. I'm gonna wrap it, or not wrap it, we're gonna thread it through the hole or the loop on the spring. Then, once you get a good bit of length, you can tie it off if you want, you don't have to. Um, kinda helps a little bit. If I can get these fat little fingers can there we go we're gonna thread it tie the knot you're gonna drop it if you can through the hole that's why doubling it up also helps because you know sewing thread normally is very uh malleable i don't know what to call it uh very uh it's prone to not being able to be forced like you know how hard it is to thread a needle if you try to thread just a single strand of sewing string in it, it would probably get hung up and everything but here you go so the trick is, is you pull it through and then it's gonna be very hard to see on camera if I can get it but you're gonna pull it you see that? That's the spring. You're gonna pull it so that you can see the loop on the spring, which will be very hard since it's such a small, <laughs> such a small hole. But once you see the hole and it's lined up, take the string and with and without letting it go, reconfirm <clears throat> that the hole is lined up or that the spring is lined up with the hole. You might have to put a little bit more. Boom. Now you won't be able to see anything because it's lined up. You can kind of see right there the spring with this string. You're going to take. the 11 millimeter, which is the longest one. And you're gonna put it through the hole. Since it's going into plastic, it should be easier. Just make sure you don't let go of that string or else the spring is gonna re-compress. You somehow, one-handedly, 
You could put tape around the string and the housing to keep it in place. You could. Wait, let me make sure everything's lined up. Yeah, everything's still lined up. You put the pin in. Thankfully, this is plastic, so the pin... The pin should go in relatively easily. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking this all, but trying to get it in. There we go. Now, like, push the pin all the way through. Then, if you pull on the string, you should feel it that you can't pull it anymore because it's in the hole. The other way to check to make sure that's all good is that if you pull this, it should snap right back into place. Boom. So, just simple, simple little trick. Cut the knots off, pull the string out. Since you double it up, it's kind of hard to tell which one goes to which, but yeah, there you go. Pull it out. Boom. It's there. Let me just make sure that I push the pin all the way through. Okay. Don't tell me I used the wrong pin. No, I used the right pin. Because this pin is too short. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I use the wrong pin? Don't tell me I used the wrong pin. I think I used the wrong pin. That sucks. I'm gonna have to redo this all over again, maybe. Unless... I can just... So I'm probably gonna have to redo this step again, but whatever. So I, I knew I should have brought my calipers out. If I brought my calipers out, I would have known which exact which one was exactly the 11 millimeter one. I just based it off the fact that a BB is six millimeters, and that this pin. It's longer than six millimeters, but this pin isn't longer than six millimeters. Oh, it is longer than six millimeters. Here's half a BB. Oh, here's half a BB. Let me get this camera angle down a little. This is half a BB. This is the pin. BB six millimeters, and that is. Let me put this pin through a little bit more. Boom. Now let's put it inside the nozzle. We'll know if this pin is too big because, or too long technically because it won't fit in. Yeah. We have to use this pin. It's weird though, because this pin seems a little too short to uh, work, but we'll see. I really don't want to have to re-thread the string and everything, that's a pain in the ass. So, let's push, let's push the pin out just a little bit. this pin through if I'm lucky boom ha it worked I just pushed the pin out with the other pin in it it worked all right that's awesome all right so that this is this is done that's that step next step is to put the 
nozzle system together. So, I'm going to get this piece right here. You're going to get whatever power nozzle gas thing you choose. I'm going with the 1.5 um, the 1.5 Joule, which is the shorter nubs. You're going to put it in the rifle or inside the nozzle like so. So what I like to do is I take the nozzle, hold it upside down, push disassembly in. Then use the rest of this step, which is putting this in, and you can put that in. I'm feeling a little bit too much resistance for some reason, so let me let me push this assembly out. I shouldn't feel that much resistance. Push that in, push this in, push that in. Now, this bar right here is going to fit into an, a cutout up here. I can show you. You see the little cutout? That's where it's going to fit into. So. Push that in, just slide right in, like so. If you look inside, you can see the spring, see the little nozzle, and see that part. So, to test this out, you get your, your thin, uh, Oh, it's gonna be so hard. You're gonna to want to push on that little plunger. You're gonna to want to push on this piece right here. You're gonna to want to try to push that forward inside the nozzle housing. And you'll know if you do it correctly. I don't even have a piece of wire that that's yeah. You know, use this. small enough to fit in there it's a really small gap if you can see between the uh, the plunger with the spring and the power nozzle see if you if you use the uh, one jewel which has a higher ridges you'll probably be easier to do because it'll be more of a gap that you can stick something in to test it um, from what I can tell so far So it does work ish. Oh, I forgot I have a sewing kit with me. I can just use a needle from here. That's definitely small enough. <laughs> Another perk of having a sewing kit. Yep. So I can see if I can get this on camera without my hands or anything in the way. The little gaps that you see right there. Push up on the plunger. And it should return smoothly. So this is how the gas blowback system works, is that the air first goes through, pushes the BB out. Then some little bits of air comes through here. And once enough air gets behind here, it pushes shut the valve, which stops the flow of gas to the barrel or BB. Um, so that's why the smaller gaps work, is because the smaller gaps makes it so it takes longer for the pressure to build up to push this valve shut but once the valve is shut all the rest of the gas then gets re-diverted to the back of this to the back of this assembly and then once that happens the back of the assembly is going to expand with air and it's going to 
want to push back. That's what happens, is that the valve, the spring, once enough pressure builds up in this chamber back here, it's going to push this valve open, like so, allowing air to then expand inside of the bolt carrier. So that's why, so what happens is the air goes through here, the valve shuts, the air builds up back here, pushes this assembly forward, which since it's stopped by the barrel, pushes this assembly, the bolt carrier, back. So once that motion of backward, or the backward motion gains momentum, it pushes back, pushes the hammer back and all that, the nozzle then returns to that position, back, recoil spring pushes it forward, or the buffer spring, and so on and so forth. So that's that little nozzle. Um, the way to make these nozzles stronger is actually to put a stiffer spring for that plunger. Um, if you use a pen spring for that plunger, like a, a spring from a pen, you cut it down to size, to the length. Pen springs are a lot stiffer. You'll see these springs that's in here is a very, very soft spring, very soft. If you put a stronger strength spin in, uh, spring in there, it means it takes m even more force to close that plunger which means there's more force or more air going to the BB. So that's a quick little cheap hack to make these bolts shoot a lot hotter, a lot faster FPS is by putting a little stiffer spring inside of there. Make sure it's the same length, but put a stiffer spring. Pen springs is what I usually do. It bumps the FPS probably like 50 to sometimes 100 depending. Um, I only did the pen spring method on my end pass bolt um that's different than stock i haven't done it in a stock bolt yet so we'll see i'll probably do that in another video but with the 1.5 joule uh little keyway nozzle inside of there and putting a stiffer spring you should probably definitely increase your fps by at least 50 fps so that's a really cheap an easy way to do it. You could pretty much do it for free. Just take a pen from the doctor's office or something. And <laughs> there you go. 100% free for you. Power up uh, modification. So yeah. So now we're ordering to the next step. So once you get this assembly in. Uh, you then take that really long pin that we just put in to the the system the which is how long that pin is huh says it's 11 millimeters just like the other one the other one is uh, they're one they're both 1.5 by 11 millimeters that's that's not correct all right but just take the longest pin and you're then going to put it through this hole, which is where that nub is that when we pushed in, you had to make sure it was aligned. So you're just going to push that through that hole. Uh, like I said, it's plastic, so it's a little easier. Um, let me uh, get the pin started and then we'll use the, the punch to get it all the way through. You're going to want to put it on the side that's flat. This side has a hole as well, but it's on more of a rounded surface, so it'll be a little harder to uh, get in. So you just push that all the way in as far as you can. And then we'll use the punch to drive it in the rest of the way, since there's some other stuff in the way. It's kind of hard because the bolt is round. <laughs> when you're trying to hammer something in on a round surface, it wants to roll around while you're trying to punch it in. So, this is going to be kind of hard. But, pin is in. There we go. Then, now you can put it back into the bolt carrier. 
Then you're gonna get the E-clip that was in one of the bags. And you're gonna put that E-clip right here. So, like I always do with E-clips, or C-clips, or whatever you wanna call it. I just put it there, and then use a punch or something, like a flat screwdriver, something to just push it into place. Looks like it's on, but it's not. I don't know why it doesn't want to go into place. Use the flat screwdriver. Since you have that O-ring back there, it's putting some pressure on onto the pieces. The O-ring's kind of wanting to pull the piece back into the to the bolt carrier. So putting this E-clip on is taking some force. It's on most of the way. There we go. Now it's on. So now I know it's not wanting to go all the way back in. That's because it's not lubed. Uh, you're going to want to use 100% silicone spray or oil, but just put it on the O-ring. Uh, you do not want to get uh, silicone in your barrel because that can really mess up your shots. Uh, but yeah, this is almost done. The last piece you got to do with the bolt is put the nozzle guide lock thing. This goes in this right here. This has a groove, as you can see, which lines up with this. This pretty much, one, make sure the nozzle stays in the correct position rotation-wise. But it also stops the bolt from being able to pull, be pulled all the way out. Doesn't want to fit. There we go. So pretty much it just rocks in. Once you put this inside the actual upper receiver, um, it will stay in there. But this stops the bolt from coming all the way out. And it keeps it from, when it's in the elongated position, it keeps it from kind of rotating out of alignment. So, once I put some oil in here, it should be a little bit smoother. But at least you know there's a good seal. That's what you need is a good seal. So yeah, that is the... Bolt. We're almost there.